clock winds back to the start of the journey to Penacony. The Astral Express, upon invitation from the watchmaker, heads to a cosmic vacation spot, the Reverie Hotel, for a banquet. However, in this sweet dream paradise, they unexpectedly become entangled in two bizarre murder mysteries. A grand struggle for a legacy begins. Numerous factions enter one after another, acting in response to the situation. The family hosts also plot to capture the Watchmaker with this opportunity, and ensure the Charmony Festival takes place as scheduled. A confrontation between the Emanator of the Nihility, Acheron, and IPC representative Aventurine becomes the turning point of the entire event. The latter, through a grand death, shatters the family's lies and reveals the existence of the primordial dreamscape, Dreamflux Reef. The Express crew thus delves into the heart of the situation. Here, Gallagher reveals to everyone the truths about the Dreamscape, the Stellaron, Mikhail, and the other Nameless. They finally uncover the legacy of the Trailblaze and, in doing so, receive a glimpse from the Harmony. To fulfill the wishes of their predecessors, everyone heads to the Penacony Grand Theater with the intention of sealing the Stellaron. However, they are forced into a deadly battle against Sunday, the head of the Oak family, who is aligned with the Order. This great battle concludes with the fall of the Order once again. The future of Penacony remains uncertain. However, thanks to the mediation of the crew, the family and the IPC agree to cede some of their interests and reach a consensus. Penacony regains the right to determine its own destiny. In the very end, Sparkle makes a grand return with a startling bombshell. This crisis is ultimately resolved amid spectacular fireworks. With everyone receiving their own best ending, the tragicomedy of the sweet dream comes to a close. that's bothering you. My lips are sealed like a bottle. Amphorius, the eternal land. Yeah, that's what Miss Black Swan said. It's a world hidden away from outside observation, with a presence only revealed by the light from the mirror of the Garden of Recollection. It's mysterious, all right. You haven't been with us on the Express very long. Will the journey be too much for you to handle? Huh? Has it been that long? We should consider Pom Pom's opinion, too. They don't know we're considering Amphorius as a destination. Yeah! Plus, even if we pass Amphorius over, we've still got a fuel problem to solve. In other words, we won't be leaving Panacone anytime soon. Or we could also revisit our previous stops to make sure that the astral charts and navigation routes are all functioning fine. I wonder if the hole in the Tychean Stadium has been repaired.
Creating chaos is also a means of maintaining social stability, if you ask me. If you have the time for mindless gossip, you're probably better off spending it on getting actual work done. Mm. They say this is all part of ongoing investigations. But is there even any point to doing this? The threat's long been neutral. They're just putting on a show. I mean, look at us. This sudden surge in inter-family cooperative efforts. It's nothing but a pretense for those outsiders, isn't it? Sounds like you've got insider intel. Now I'm curious. Are the stories going around true? Was the furor that broke out a while ago really a result of trouble within the Oak family? Those are some difficult questions. Didn't I just say that creating chaos is also a means to maintaining social stability? Now, who knows who's been fanning the flames? But there are a dozen rumors going around out there, each one more outlandish than the last. Oh, I've heard those. Conspiracy theories about how the IPC had orchestrated everything and... Uh, what was it again? That the chaos was only quelled because of an accident? Ah, uh, makes no sense. So what's the lowdown? Well, the truth has probably been long buried under all the hearsay. All I can say for sure is that someone's taken the rap for it. You mean the former Oak family head? Bingo. Most of the blame was pinned on him when the Charmony Festival was abruptly cancelled. Since then, not a single soul seen him. Heck, forget his whereabouts. Nobody even knows if he's still alive. Talk about scary. For all we know, we might have watched something go down in history, like what happened to the Black Plum family back then, without even realizing it. I've heard another theory about that family head, though. I beg your pardon, sirs. Dreamweavers are carrying out inspections on the routes around here, and all affected facilities have been closed off. Kindly take a detour in the meantime. What happened? Is this because of the Stellaron? Jeez, are we Pentaconians never gonna dream in peace again? There is no cause for alarm, sir. The Stellaron has already been sealed. This is just a routine inspection. A move to heighten security, if you will. Please rest assured that the family will do everything in our power to protect the sweet dreams of every guest. I see. We'll leave the two of you to your work, then. Hmm. Excuse me, sir. Have we met before? Oh. Do you recall when or where we might have met? Uh... My bad. I must be mistaken. Sorry about that. Sweet dreams to both of you, sirs. sure have a knack for stirring up trouble. Of all the routes available, you had to take the one that Bloodhound's keeping watch over. We shouldn't run into any problems with you around. Even if they see through the Harmony's power of disguise, there'll be a way for us to escape. Spare a thought for me, will you? Just being in your company is plenty enough to get me into trouble, Mr. Prime Fugitive of Penacony. And that is exactly why I need you with me. You're the only one I can rely on in Penicone now. <laughs> the only one you can rely on, huh? What about her? <sighs> At least she was spared from the consequences of my actions. What a shame, huh? Why do you say that? Just thought that being mean might be more effective than consoling you. I've seen plenty like you. 
eager for everyone to take you to task after a setback because that's the only way you'll feel better. As though the more they condemn you, the more likely you can rectify your mistake. That said, if I'd really wanted to hit you where it hurts, I'd use a different approach. Like a show of sympathy, for example. <sighs> You're right. I won't deny that. She should still be in Penacony. Aren't you going to look for her? That won't be necessary. I'm sure you already know why, considering your vested interest in reading my thoughts. I can't bring myself to see her when I'm a fugitive. All right, then let's keep going. Helping a fugitive return to their home. So exciting. I see two bloodhounds. They appear to be on official business, unlike the pair from earlier. What's happening at Idean Park? Hey! Hey! In case you didn't notice, I can't see anything. My apologies. I forgot that you're not very tall. <sighs> Remind me. Why do I have to make this trip with you again? We've been through this. You're the only one I can turn to now. Besides, we once lived a cat and dog existence. Embroiling you in my affairs won't weigh on my conscience. Well, you certainly don't have much of one if you can bring yourself to say something like that. Yet you will repay this favor all the same. After all, you're only alive today because of me. You owe me that much. Holy moly! Can you get any more conceited? When you were abandoned in the wild and near your end, I showed you a way to survive and helped you escape the jaws of death. When you were at your wit's end and felt lost about your future, I did everything within my power to help you safeguard your position in the family. Okay, okay, I get it already. You have a way with words, I'll give you that. Still, it's one thing to repay a favor. Quite another to knowingly put myself in harm's way. I don't understand. Why are you hell-bent on going back to Panacone? Is this an IPC mission? Did they make you a deal? You can have your freedom back, but in return you must turn against all whom you once called family or something like that? Regrettably, Lady Bonajade didn't drop so much as a hint about it. Go now. You are free, O oh Chosen One, who dare to exceed his bounds. Sever your wings, descend to the mortal realm, and walk their lands. See what this world is truly like. I will not accept your charity. As I mentioned earlier, it's a trade, and you don't have to give me an answer right now. Rewards are not reaped in a day, and if there's one thing I'm best at, it's waiting. The sweet dream still continues, and the night is still long. You have plenty of time to contemplate your answer. She only left me with a most intriguing message before setting me free. As for whether I can afford the price of my freedom, I'll only know when I find out what it is. But nothing good ever comes out of being in the IPC's debt. I'll cross that bridge when I get to it. For now, there's still some time before that payment is due. So why not exercise the right to freedom that I've just regained? By walking straight into a trap? Or by making amends for past deeds. When it's time to go, this will be farewell for good. So, before I leave Panacone, I'd like to take some time to look back on all the events that have taken place. Can't you just look back on it... from a distance? There's something else I want to do, too. The embryo of philosophy may have fallen, but the order in Panacone wasn't built in a day. This sweet dream 
is likely to still contain residual traces of the Oak family's influence. Get off your high horse. The other four families are more than capable of working things out on their own. I might have gone astray, but others shouldn't have to clean up after my mistakes. Then you should also know that the IPC isn't going to help you a second time. If you fall into the family's hands again, you're done for. You know how it is. Old habits die hard. The tie should be on the center line. The shirt must not protrude from the vest. Trouser creases should be perfectly straight and always aligned with the tips of your shoes. We should always ensure that everything is in order before walking out the door. The same applies when bidding my home farewell, too. But what has Idean Park got to do with you? Don't tell me that the Founder is one of your disguises. I'm not that old. Oh, come on. Take a joke, will ya? <sighs> Sorry, but park facilities are out of order. Refurbishment works are currently underway. Please come back again later. That sounds familiar. <sighs> I'm aware of the situation. You can skip the report. What? What are you talking about? I mean... Mr. One Week, please excuse me. I should have recognized you earlier. I must be more tired than I realized. I want to know what's going on in there. You'll tell me. Won't you? Uh, there's nothing much to say, actually. We bloodhounds are just as baffled as you are. My guess is that it's simply part of the aftermath of the Stellaron incident. Aftermath? Uh, you are? Renowned workaholic, Mr. Workday. He works for me. You don't know him? Oh, I see. Pardon my ignorance, sir. Coming back to the topic of the park, let's just say that it has been recently observed that certain behaviors are not tolerated around here. What happens if you violate the prohibitions? It's baffling, but corrective measures will be taken. It's kind of difficult to explain. Maybe you'd like to see for yourself? Yeah, that works. Can you keep watch over the entrance? We'll go in and have a look for ourselves. Please, take these notes with you. They may come in handy. You shouldn't have said that just now. It'll only make us look suspicious. Said what? Mr. Workday? <laughs> I was just telling the truth. I've always found this name to be more suitable for you. So, why are we here? You managed this park before? You could say that. I was still a child back then. To become the bronze Melodia of the Oak family, I'd gone under Mr. Gopherwood's tutelage. We were taking a walk in the park like any other day, when he suddenly hit on the idea to have me manage the park. Within the domain he demarcated, my every word would hold the force of law. In hindsight, that was probably the first time that I enforced order. You rose through the ranks soon after. I take it that you must have done a pretty good job? Quite the contrary. I made a terrible mess of things. Fortunately, the tourists thought of it as nothing more than a spell of merrymaking. Was that his way of training you? Perhaps he was just using an approach with lighter consequences to show me what he'd learned in life. That there is never an ideal paradigm when it comes to rules. If the Enforcer is incapable of introspection, then even regulations once laid down with the noblest of intentions will eventually become defiled. This place is no exception. The distorted after echoes of the Order will only add to the chaos. Let's see what we have on these notes. Hmm. 
No consumption of food except for burgers. What? No consumption of food other than burgers, especially ice cream. Please tell me you didn't make this rule. I have nothing against desserts. The only reason I made that rule is so that people can learn to wait in line in an orderly manner for things, instead of shoving and jostling people around. What happens if I break the rule? It's as the Bloodhound said. Corrective measures will be enforced. Huh. <laughs> Try me. Wait, don't... Ah, <laughs> so, where are those corrective measures? That's odd. Didn't I tell ya? The family can take care of the issue without you having to get involved. Next on the list is the stage. Let's go and check it out. Only cast and crew members are allowed on the stage. Hmm. A surprisingly reasonable rule. And an easy one to test. Neither of us is part of the cast or a crew member. Let's try it out. Huh? Let's try that again. What's going on? Guide those who have lost their way back onto the right path. Looks like this is an example of the corrective measures that the Bloodhound mentioned. It's exactly what I would have done back then. You've been iron-fisted since you were little, haven't you? Wait a sec. If... if this is how violations are corrected, then... everything that I ate just now? I tried to warn you. How do you feel? Now? I'm feeling murderous. In any case, say what you will, but I can't sit by and do nothing. Not when I'm the cause of all this trouble in Ideen Park. There's no need to involve the Dreamweavers. I'll fix these distortions once and for all. What's the plan? Nothing complicated. All distortions have their roots. We'll be able to trace them to the source once they manifest. Breaking a few rules will do. We just need to make sure that the corrective measures that will be implemented aren't too much for us to handle. When a distorted after echo manifests to correct us, I'll be able to pinpoint its whereabouts. Then, I'll use the power of tuning to heal the dreamscape. So, can I take it that rules are meant to be broken now? Please do not use Soul Glad bottle caps sold by the Dream Jolt Troop while experiencing the attractions. The Dream Jolt Troop, where? Are they hiding or something? Do not discard. Trash in trash cans. This is absurd. Did you make this rule too? Uh, children tend to be fascinated by such paradoxes. I was no exception. Forget it. I don't even know how to joke about this. Well, what do you suggest we throw in? Something's happening. Huh. <gasps> what 
is this? A woodcutter's trash can? We're not breaking enough rules. We should look elsewhere, too. Oh, there it is. Found a good hiding spot, didn't ya? Come on, let's buy some bottle caps from it. Just one moment. <laughs> Let me translate that for you. Who are you trying to pay with your spare change? Ugh. I'm afraid you're going to have to handle this if it isn't enough. Handle this? Handle what? Wait, is that really all you've got on you? May I remind you that I am currently on the run? <laughs> Luck's on our side. Looks like we scraped together just enough. Shall we give this capsule machine a try and see what happens? Nothing's off so far. Maybe we should open the capsule? Uh, they can't be seriously going that far, right? No, no, no. Hey, look out! No dirty tricks. Time only. for a fun. <laughs> Eternal. It's on me. <laughs> oh. This is double speed. I weep for the departed. <laughs> it too shall fall. Bust? Or maybe I'll take it off! Watch your head! Time for a fun! <laughs> All will be swept away by the wind. Spend freely. On the still waters of Lydia. Time for a fun! <laughs> This is double speed. No dirty tricks, alright. Enjoying yourself? Always. Oh, uh, bust. Or maybe I'll take it off. Watch your head. I weep for the departed. It too shall fall. They have to do that. They could have just recalled the capsule. Perhaps making the attractions no longer just attractions is another corrective measure? Ugh. Aren't the rules being too finicky with words? Enough. The location of the distortion is nearby. Oh, there it is. Huh. 
It does look somewhat like you. Time for it to disappear for good. Reveal thyself unto me, as is customary. All creatures endowed with eyes bear souls of equal worth. Whoa, it worked. The IPC totally should have sent someone to keep an eye on you. Aren't they worried that you might make a comeback in Penacony and grow a new pair of wings? So long as there remains a need for me to keep a low profile, I'm no threat to them. That's true. Come to think of it, you had always been in the spotlight, be it as a respected member of the elite or a leader. When was the last time you fell into the mud? All the way back during your childhood days? <laughs> Sometime before I turned six. Like most boys would, I tried to fly with my ear feathers, only to fall into a pit. I almost broke my halo. That was sarcasm, in case you didn't realize. But whoa, you actually remember something like that? You never forget times of failure. It's only human nature. Ugh, you're probably the only one who'd consider something like that a failure. What is it this time? Just looking back. But nothing's there. That's the whole point of revisiting a place. When I look at everything here, the memories are so fresh, it's as if it all only happened yesterday. When the younger me tasted failure here, I ran myself ragged to fix the mess. I thought myself no longer the same person as before, but it looks like I was just going round in circles. I'm glad for this chance to look back on my past in this way. Come now, we should go. This will be a long farewell. Heading next. Oti Mall. There are bloodhounds stationed along the way, though. It might be better to take a quieter route. I don't mean to meddle, but I'd advise you to stay away from that place. Did something happen? There isn't any concrete information yet, but anomalies have been reported around the area. The family is currently investigating. You okay? I'm fine. The Stellaron incident may have been quelled, but who is to say that nobody has another agenda? Thanks for the tip, sir. We'll make a detour. May you stay safe, too. Hold on. <laughs> Sweet dreams are technically safe, but it would be wise to look out for oncoming vehicles. <sighs> Thank you. was no ordinary passerby. It's a miracle that he didn't see through your disguise. 
the Astral Express should have departed a long time ago. Why is he still in Penacony? We needn't change our plans because of him, but be sure to keep your guard up. I hope nothing terrible has fallen upon Penacony while I was in captivity the last few days. Come now, it's time we set off. Let's not stick too close to each other, just in case. A few feet or so between us will do. <sighs> Seems I let my wishful thinking get the best of me. Will you at least give me a chance to explain? I will, but before I do... Put your hands behind your back and answer my questions in short sentences. Short sentences? I need to make sure your words aren't concealing any dangerous incantations. I can't believe I've left everyone with such a peculiar impression of me. Please, believe me when I say that I didn't come back here with ill intent. Panacone will never experience the Order again, either. I'm afraid I won't be taking your words at face value, not after how you wielded the power of harmony. Answer me. What are you doing here? It looks like there's only one way to gain your trust. Come on out, one week. We found ourselves an ally. So, it was the IPC that freed you. My sister has likely made an agreement of some sort with them. As for how I'm able to move around freely in Panacone, I have one week to thank for that. As you can see, I've only returned to my home to bid it farewell. Would you be kind enough to give me a chance to say goodbye, so that I may leave without regrets? Mm. Agreed. But, until you leave Penacone for good, you're to stay by my side. You have my gratitude. I left my home in a hurry, too. I know how it feels. That said, I can't make this call by myself. My companions need to know about this, too. The Astral Express crew is in Penacone, too? Come with me. We'll go find them. You come along, too. Okay, okay. Boy, this is gonna be a party. We're here. They should be somewhere nearby. Mr. Yang, if you don't mind, there's something that puzzles me. Now that the crisis on the planet of festivities has been averted, shouldn't the Astral Express have departed to continue on its trailblazing journey? Why have you and your companions stayed behind in Penacony? Could it be that someone stirred up trouble after I left? And if that were indeed the case? I doubt I'm in any position to be proposing ideas, but I'm happy to defer to the Nameless and aid with any plans you may have. There's no need to worry. All is well in Panacone. Our reason for lingering here is a certain unusual passenger. A passenger? The Express has been commissioned to send a passenger back home. We're just resting up in Penacone for a while before we depart. Hmm? By passenger, do you mean this lady here? Uh, uh or... These ladies? This... Problem.
Isn't it fascinating how variables never fail to find their way into the lives of organic life forms? I have no interest in the Harmony's celebration, so it's only natural for me to turn down the invitation. But it looks like my decision also cost me the front row seat to all of your exciting adventures. Conclusion. There is likewise a downside to pursuing reason. Hmm. I hear that the Astral Express has established a collaboration with the Garden of Recollection for your next destination. Could there be more to it? Logic. The average Pathstrider wouldn't leave any trace behind in the Garden of Recollection's mirror. It's a pity we do not communicate much within the society. Not to mention we've lost most of our members to the Lord of Silence. I have never heard of Amphorius, however. That Foxian girl has indeed been through an unimaginable turn of events. I suppose that's the fate you organic life forms are bound by. So is it out of goodwill that the Astral Express volunteered to send her back home? Looks like this is one exceptional passenger. Don't you have to accompany her then, Miss Himako? So, is anyone gonna tell me what's going on? March? Logically? Not now, of all times. Ah, <sighs> forget it. I'll tell you. We walked around with Miss Ting Yoon for a while after separating from the rest. But then we ran into something Weird. Did something happen in the dreamscape? Uh, actually, it's more like it was someone's fault. We met a Papeshi filming a Try Not To Laugh challenge, and he gave us some of his candy. A type of candy that's supposed to make you fall over laughing. Huh. So that sort of Try Not To Laugh challenge. I didn't really want to do it. But he insisted on us giving it a shot. That's how we got into this problem. What happened? Oh, come on, stop interrupting. So we had some candy and we're so happy we rolled around on the ground for a bit before standing up. But once we did, we realized Miss Ting Yoon Ting Yoon ate the candy too, but she only sneezed nonstop. Achoo! Achoo! Sneeze after sneeze. And before we knew it, she multiplied into several Ting Yoons right in front of us. What's your take on this? 
a dreamscape as a memoria world. It is likely the candy triggered her hypersensitive mind, causing scattered memory fragments to dissociate and become entities themselves. There is no cause for concern. We've experienced similar incidents from time to time in the sweet dream. Mr. Yang? Who is this? It's okay. You can reveal yourself now. I was only being careful, or we would have been stopped by the bloodhounds more than once on our way here. Help me remove my disguise one week. It's been a while, everyone. Everyone, stay calm. Uh, I'll explain. I believe that at this point, Sunday has no reason to be dishonest. But to prevent any unforeseen complications, I'll be accompanying him everywhere he goes until he leaves Panacone. Mr. One Week here is an old acquaintance of Sunday's. Pleased to meet you, fair lady. And you, of course. You're the heavyweight who pummeled this control freak. Ugh, the surprises just keep pouring in. First there was Miss Acheron, and then Miss Ting Yoon. Why does it seem like Mr. Yang always comes back with some extraordinary guests? <clears throat> Let's leave this discussion for later. For now, we should be focusing on returning Miss Ting Yoon to her normal self. Uh, that's not gonna be easy. You'll see what I mean, Mr. Yang. These Ting Yoons aren't exactly easy to communicate with. March 7th. Have you taken the time to consider my suggestion? Your... suggestion? Oh, wait. Which Miss Ting Yoon are you again? It's me! I'm the one who wants every Ting Yoon to come together to form the Ting Yoon Merchant Guild! How often do you get the chance to work with yourself? Just imagine how in sync we'll be with one another! We're bound to thrive and prosper! I know, we can't leave the dreamscape to trade with the outside world, so that's where you come in, Miss March 7th. Your wits surpass many others, making you the perfect person to handle liaison negotiations on our behalf. <laughs> I guess I can consider it. I hope everything goes smoothly for your guild. Uh, there. Now do you see what I mean, Mr. Yang? There does appear to be an element of her talking to herself. Hey! You better not be referring to the part about my wits surpassing many others. Mr. Yang mentioned the Express's next voyage is to send a passenger back home. Could this lady be from the Sienjo Alliance? Yes. Uh, more specifically, the Sienjo Wafu. The Law Fu? Didn't the Antimatter Legion launch an ambush on the Law Fu some time ago? Was she one of the few survivors? Quite the contrary. She might have been the person closest to the Eye of the Storm. <sighs> Looks like there's a lot more to this story. A uh, story for another time. As host of the Dreamscape, do you have any suggestions for fixing this problem? I don't have much to go on now. Perhaps we should talk to the other Miss Ting Yoons here. That sounds nice. P 
people never forget a personally prepared home-cooked meal. But then again, gifts should be lasting. What about a delightful new bouquet of flowers on the table each day? Wouldn't they do a better job at brightening up someone's day? Hmm, that sounds like a good idea. Um, if we really want to do this right though, it's the thought behind the gift that truly matters. The more thought goes into the gift, the better the recipient feels it. Hmm, she makes a valid point too. You sure have a way of not offending anyone. These three Ting Yun's don't look like they'll be reaching a conclusion anytime soon. We won't be able to get a word in. So, what do you think, Sunny? Uh, let's try a different name, my dear friend. Oh, don't we sound chummier that way? I took a leaf out of this Foxy and Girls book. The problem with Miss Ting Yun is just as I suspected before. That prank shattered her into notes that are each a part of her. In other words, it means the Ting Yuns we see here are all different aspects of her psyche. Okay... You just made it sound a whole lot more complicated. At any rate, this is a known occurrence across the dreamscape. Tuning could be the way to fix it. The only problem is that these Miss Ting Yuns are too caught up in their own world. Is there one we can properly speak with? One that we can speak with? Oh, I think there is one! But it may take me a while to identify her. I feel like it's not going to be a wise move to interrupt her. Like innocence that adults have is a lot more resilient than you can imagine. Even if that's true, it doesn't apply to her. Oh, were you all looking for me? Oh, were you all looking for me? <sighs> Found her! Uh, if I remember correctly, this Miss Ting Yun's trait is. It's nothing special, really. She ought to meet your one we can properly speak with requirement, right? Worth a try. My lady, if I may, I wish to perform a tuning on you. Uh, before you start, you should know that we're keeping our eyes on you. If you even think about taking Miss Ting Yun hostage! It 
is not my intention to provoke you. Perhaps, as assurance, we can have my friend here perform the task in my stead. One week has a higher mastery of the harmony than I do. That is true. If you still have concerns, you are also free to restrain me while he performs the tuning. Um, there's no need for that. You're acting so... sincere. I'm actually surprised. Are you alright with this, Miss Tingyun? Hmm... I go as the wind blows, so you may decide for me. Then kindly forgive our intrusion. Please do your best, One Week. hear a voice just now? A voice? Never mind. Uh, look! It's working! Every encounter with you would always be in moments of distress. <laughs> Did I conduct myself improperly? Nothing. Just a trivial matter. What do you sense? I should have let you handle it yourself. This girl is not as ordinary as she appears. I nearly died. Just now. Don't be afraid. What... is this place? No matter what you see, you only need to remember one thing. You're not alone. The life support pod is ready. They were only minor issues. That's great. Otherwise, that person from the Xianzhou might not be able to hold on much longer. You're still trying. There's no precedent for saving someone who was destroyed by a Lord Ravager. Will it even work? I'm not a genius, so I don't understand the logic behind it. But if she says it's possible, then it must be. Uh, excuse me. 
Could you tell me where I am? Can they not hear me? are wounds left by the destruction. They have taken root within your body and cannot be removed. The... destruction? I don't understand. Please, who are you? And why won't you show yourself? I can't go to you. All I can do is wait for you to finish walking this path. You want me to go through here? Do I have to... fight it? There's no need for that. It's too dangerous. And you can't do it anyway. Don't fight it. Embrace it. Try to coexist with it. Think of it as... feeling your own scars. My... Scars? Uh, uh, wait! Is this called... Coexisting? Don't worry. As I said before, you're not alone. Eternal. All will be swept away by the wind. I weep for the departed. It too shall fall. Time for a fun. Ah, <laughs> uh, bust. Or maybe I'll take it all. Destined for oblivion. And freely. On the still waters of oblivion, I weep for the departed. It too shall fall. Time for a fun. <laughs> this is double speed. Existence is unity. Huh? Destiny for oblivion. will be swept away by the wind. Ah. On the still waters of oblivion, I weep for the departed. It too shall fall. How can it be? Why are there still so many of them? The ones from before weren't defeated either. As I said before, you can't defeat them. No one can. You can fall into the darkness and die alongside these scars of the destruction. Or bring them with you when you return to the world here. These are your two choices. 
Return to the world? What are you saying? Oh, no wonder those two ignored me. Am I just a wandering spirit now? Close, but not quite. So... I'm trapped between life and death? Existing in a limbo? You can think of it that way. Based on what you said, even if I should wake up, these wounds that caused my death will remain on my body and never heal? I don't understand. You appear to be trying to save me, Benefactor. But why are you telling me all this? It's a habit of mine. I believe everyone should have the right to choose whether they wish to return to this world or not. Be that as it may, I don't remember anything. There's nothing to help me make a choice. That doesn't matter. I believe the desire to live was born from nothing to begin with. <sighs> you may also prove yourself to be the exception. I would also be pleased with that result. That's part of living. Survival or destruction is no longer a choice for you. They both now grow along the same path. And only by walking this path will you break through the darkness and arrive at my side. Feeling more awake? Congratulations. You attained your very first victory in this tug of war. It's a good start. Uh, I... This is... Let me explain. You were attacked by a Lord Ravager. By all rights, you should not have survived. But someone didn't agree with that assessment, and it just so happens, I was able to fulfill his request. What about the other merchants? I don't know. <sighs> Why me? Because you were the most unfortunate. You fell into the hands of that Lord Ravager, who destroyed your body and spirit. Yet, you are also the most fortunate. Her desire to claim everything about you for herself meant she needed time, so you were spared instant annihilation. There is only a fine line between resurrection and escaping death. Yet, they couldn't be more different. If you had truly died, I would have been powerless to do anything for you. Uh, my body feels strange. I'm sorry. I can't let you regain your ability to feel just yet. You'd be in excruciating pain. Your body was contaminated by the destruction and suffered severe damage. As I said before, these wounds will stay with you for the rest of your life. To prevent its resurgence, I made some minor modifications to your body. 
or more specifically, your tail. You'll have to learn to adapt to it. Unfortunately, the inescapable price of survival is often more adversity. <sighs> Regardless, I'm grateful to you for saving my life. There's no need for that. This was merely a transaction. With this, the debt between the traveling merchant and me is clear. <sighs> Who? Don't worry about it. You should sleep for a little longer. By the time you wake up, you won't remember any of these details. I'll arrange for someone to send you home. Which reminds me, you seem to have some dependable friends with close ties to you. You should go with them. It can only help with your recovery to hear more about your past. Quick to the draw, aren't you? The tuning rebounded and affected one week instead. This is no ordinary woman. I suppose there's no point in hiding it from you anymore. Uh, Miss Ting Yun is originally from the Sien Chou. She had an unfortunate encounter with a Lord Ravager who robbed her of her identity and left her on the verge of death. While she miraculously escaped with her life, her body suffered terrible injuries beyond all power to heal. But something happened to change that outcome? Yes, uh, a genius got involved. She's very accomplished in the field of life sciences and managed to grant Miss Ting Yun a shot at survival. After that, she asked the Express to escort Miss Ting Yun back home. We made a stop at Panacone along the way, uh, partly to allow her some time to convalesce. Uh, I'm so sorry. I thought no one would be affected if I hid inside a dream. I, I didn't expect so many mishaps to happen. That's alright. So long as nobody was hurt. Can I get something to drink? I feel like I've been asleep for ten years. That's fine. We should find another place to talk anyway. We drew some attention with that commotion earlier. Soul glad again. I'm a local, you know. You'll have to make do. In any case, I must thank the both of you for your assistance. It was nothing. Now that the matter with Miss Ting Yun is resolved, are we meeting your other two companions next? There's no need for that. Mr. One Week is in poor condition, so let's wrap up your farewells first. I'll leave Miss Ting Yun in your hands. Uh huh? But, Mr. Yang, the messenger from the Sienjo is almost here. You're not coming with us? I trust that you can handle it. Besides, Himiko will be there. She'll be able to handle any decisions should you run into any difficulties. Okay. We better hurry then. Ready? Miss Ting Yun is going back to the Alliance, so we're here to help her pick out souvenirs. I'm not too familiar with this planet. I'm worried an unscrupulous cutthroat merchant will try to take advantage of me. Uh, luckily, the people I want to buy these gifts for are friends you already know on the Sienjo. So I'll be counting on both your stakeholder intuitions for recommendations. As if a merchant could seriously take advantage of you. 
Well, I already picked up a few gifts earlier, so that means there's only three more left to go. But we've already lost a lot of time, so we better not drag our feet. Feeling lucky. Welcome. How can I help you? Hello there. It's my first time visiting the Dreamscape, so I wanted to buy some local specialties as souvenirs for my friends back home. My two friends here are more familiar with the Dreamscape and recommended your shop, so I'm here to take a look. Why, wow, you really know how to flatter. Go ahead, browse all you like. First, we have Lady Fuxuan of the Divination Commission. What do you think best suits her? Uh, did you pick that because of her third eye? <sighs> A meticulously thought out and interesting suggestion. It'll make for a novel gift. Let's go with that. Next is... General Jing Yuan. Come to Clock Studios theme park to learn more about the history of the planet of festivities. <laughs> I think the general will like this gift. Finally, we have Lady Bai Lu of the Alchemy Commission. She loves excitement. Uh, both wings and horns? That's a little much, don't you think? <laughs> you carry yourself with such dignity and grace, but you still have the heart of a child. Lady Bailu loves these types of accessories. Let's go with your suggestion. That's all of them. Please wrap them up for me. Thanks to both your help, everything went smoother than I expected. And it looks like we still have some time to spare. Why don't we pay another visit to the Dreamscape sales store? You can find memory bubbles pretty much anywhere. But Penacony's dream bubbles are extraordinary. Even if we don't get them as gifts, we can keep them as souvenirs for ourselves. A souvenir for myself? That's definitely an idea I can get behind. But there's one more thing I wish to do. Since this is our last stop, could I have a word with you two in private? Perhaps somewhere more secluded. I'd like to discuss a personal matter. This is a good... Miss Ting Yoon? What's this about? You've looked out for me during our travels together these past few days. I'm truly grateful and can't thank you enough. But there are some things I find difficult to forget. I feel it's only right that I tell you what's on my mind before we part ways. Do you two still remember what it was like when you first saw me? How could we forget? He was so shocked, he was frozen in place when he shouted. <sighs> exactly. And that's precisely why I haven't been able to shake off this strange feeling in the days since I started traveling with you. When I asked for your names, I couldn't help but think that this first encounter was actually a long-awaited reunion for you. I've heard about what happened to you on the Xianzhou. 
and I've got to admit that Ventilia's disguise was so perfect it was like another me tricking everyone. Yeah, we couldn't even tell when you were replaced by Fantilia. I figured it happened when we were after Kafka. You vanished for a while. I thought you must have come back as a double. <laughs> but it was much earlier than that. That thought has me filled with sorrow. As if a piece of my life had been stolen away, and I had no part in it. That's what I've been puzzled about, too. I never actually saw how Fantilia managed to disguise herself as me. What was your impression of that Tingyun, if you recall? Mm, that's just the nature of the Foxians. It's widely known that mystery is the key to our allure. So, what did she seem like to you? <laughs> I'll just assume that's a compliment. Maybe next time you could just say silver-tongued. Was there... anything particularly memorable? Hey! No tattling! <laughs> now the final question. In your eyes, am I just like the Tingyun you remember? Wait, don't you find that question a bit weird? You're the real Tingyun. Why compare yourself to an imposter? Oh, Miss March, you might have the wrong idea. I'm... Just feeling a mix of regret and relief. Uh-huh. <laughs> As a merchant, staying well-informed is crucial. It's only natural for me to stay updated on the events of the Lafu before I return. If I had rushed in and out back then, I wouldn't have been much help. Instead, I would have postponed the trip and sought assistance from allies, but in that case... We wouldn't have crossed paths. Exactly. Based on your description, that Lord Ravager was indeed cunning. Her demeanor mirrored mine so closely that it felt like she was living my life for a few days, rather than merely disguising herself. I regret missing out on your Sanjo journey. But everything that unfolded afterward aside from the scheming, played out exactly as if I'd been there. This leads me to consider another possibility. Fantilia had stolen a piece of my life, and a Foxian always gets even. I will not be taken advantage of. I must take something back from her as well. But after thinking it over, the only thing that could be considered equal value is the bond I have with all of you. That thought has brought me great comfort. And now I know how to speak to you properly. We've never even met before, and here you are, offering your help, just as before. I should have treated you with respect, but fear of Fantilia made me act like somebody else. And now... I will reclaim everything I have lost. And it should begin with a proper acknowledgement. Dear benefactors, I extend my heartfelt gratitude to you. Looks like we're off to a good start. Moving forward, I'll definitely be trying more things like this from now on. And you, my dear benefactors, will be my source of courage. Miss Tingyun, that's way too over the top. Just don't make any risky decisions. It might overwhelm him. 
<laughs> we'll see. I just hope the Tingyun in your memories won't be tainted by Fantilia anymore. All right, no more questions. I hope I didn't take up too much of your time. Let's continue on our way. A dream about eons. Welcome to the Dreamscape Sand Store. The Doctor Edward at your service. We're looking for some dreams to give us gifts. Something exotic and preferably captivating. Now, just a friendly reminder, being too picky won't help you find the best screen. Just to dampen your spirits ahead of time. Now, that being said, there are always some lucky exceptions. Why not too long ago I procured a dream bubble that sounds perfectly. The story unfolds in the Shenzhou Alliance, where a young swordmaster strives to become the sword champion. However, this junior foxy and sword, who just turns a hundred, puts him in a tough spot. Why does that sound oddly familiar? Mm, since I'm returning to the Xianzhou, I think it's better to choose something unrelated to the Alliance. Feel free to pick a few for me. I love customers like you. So easy to work with. So easy to take advantage of, you mean? Just don't pick anything weird, okay? <laughs> oh, speaking of dreamscapes, I have a gift for you, my benefactors. After troubling you all this time, I couldn't leave without properly expressing my thanks. Here's a dream bubble for you. I hope you enjoy it. It's really nice of you. Here are the dream bubbles I prepared. Thank you for your business. Well, it looks like everything's finally in order. I suppose it's time to head back. I'm not ready to say goodbye just yet.
we got delayed on the way. Mr. Yang will explain in detail when he gets back. Has the messenger from the Sienjo arrived yet? Long time no see, everyone. Madame Yukong? I've imagined this moment many times. I was worried I might embarrass myself in front of you. I even rehearsed every word beforehand. Now it seems it was unnecessary. Ting Yun, I'm here to take you home. expecting it to be you. What a wonderful surprise. I wanted to come because, after all, it's you who's coming home. Yeah, me of all people. <laughs> Your body. It's going to be tough from now on, isn't it? <laughs> I've already escaped death once. What more could I ask for? Also, it's not all bad. I might even beat you at arm wrestling now. You're still the same, carefree as always. I have a lot I'd like to tell you, but I'll save it for the road. It's a long journey back to the Lofu. Even if we can't completely rid you of the pain, there must be ways to alleviate it on the Sienjo. Hmm, I have no doubt. But since we're alone here, May I ask you one more thing? Do I really have to go back to the Lafu? Why? You don't want to? <sighs> Despite Fantilia's ruthlessness, she spared me when I should have been eliminated. And why did Miss Ron May, who has no ties to the Sienjo, go out of her way to save me? It seems as if I've become a pawn in someone else's game. There are people within the Alliance who also believe that the suspect is now on the Yuchua. If that's the case, it's all the more reason for me not to return to the Lafu and complicate things. I might as well take advantage of this situation. Take advantage of the situation? What do you mean? Right now... The marks of ruin inside me maintain a delicate balance. Moreover, they were created by Fantilia herself. If possible, please inform the General, and arrange for me to meet with the Marshal. Maybe this body of mine can help the Alliance get one step closer to the Xianzhou's enemies. <sighs> when Ron Mei visited the Law Fu earlier, she mentioned what happened to you. This coincided with when the message sent by the Astral Express arrived. The Arbiter Generals concluded that Fentilia did not intend for you to survive. If utilized strategically, this could give the Alliance an element of surprise. If we follow this plan, we must keep your resurrection hidden. But before making any decisions, I want to know what you think. If you wish to go home, I'll support you, no matter what others may say. Then I'm glad. I shall save you the trouble of hearing what those people may say. The road ahead is perilous. If you decide to take it, I won't stop you. Maybe I'm being selfish, but I still want to know. Are you choosing this? because it's what you really want? 
I've come to see myself clearly in this dream journey. Perhaps it's what people call a blessing in disguise. There is someone who can attest to my true intentions. Please follow me. She should be around here somewhere. After a strange encounter, I was fragmented into multiple Tingyuns, each embodying a different aspect of my memories. And one of them hasn't returned to me, because she ventured too far. Until now. You mean her? What is she doing? Um, she's captivated by something that has deeply mesmerized me. As a fleeting emotion, she's no different from a newborn. Her boarding this ship was solely down to her inner impulse. Madame Yukong, do you remember? Perhaps that was just an ordinary flight for you, but for a certain child, that was her first experience with the sky. <laughs> of course I remember. Back then, you were still young enough for me to carry. You probably still can. Want to give it a try? <laughs> I'm afraid you'd be too heavy for me now. Just kidding. I remember you kept begging me to take you to the Star Skiff, and even dreamed of becoming a pilot. But once you were airborne, you were so nervous that you clung to others for dear life. This flight was a turning point in my life. The boundless cosmos unfolded before me. I was completely mesmerized, not just by the view, but by a realization. In this world, there are paths beyond waiting for us to explore. Even though I lacked the talent to pilot the star skiff and wasn't much of a warrior, I still chose to travel around with the Merchant Guild. Even to this day, this thrill still courses through me. That hasn't changed? Never. Now I can embark once more on my journey as a traveler of no return, exploring the paths that lie beyond. Speaking of which, how are things with the Whistling Flames? I've left Yan Ming in charge for now. He's reliable, but he can be a bit extreme, and might not always follow your principles as a traveling merchant. <laughs> My principles. Hmm. Forsake what others fight for and take what others abandon. That's the way to navigate the world and achieve my goals. <laughs> I will continue to uphold my principles. But now I've also learned that while these merchant principles may apply to humans, <laughs> they falter in the face of the gods. This shouldn't fall on your shoulders to begin with. You are simply an innocent survivor in this war. Madame Yukong, you were once a survivor in the war too, weren't you? <sighs> in a hazy dream, I vaguely remember someone telling me that the inescapable price of survival is often more adversity. But... Madame Yukong, the gods use humans as pawns in their cosmic game, sacrificing countless innocent souls. Have you ever thought about making them pay? Every moment of every day. 
But as inconsequential as we are, how can we escape the fate of being mere pawns? If I could choose, I would never want you to become a pawn. I just wish you could still be that carefree little fox. Not caught up in this war. Don't be disheartened, Madame Yukon. Thanks to the favor of the Lord Ravager, I've become a player in this game. Remember, it's often the unassuming pawns, the lone traveler, or the worm that subdues the dragon, that leave even the best strategists helpless. So, now I'll become a cunning speck of dust and make those masterminds behind the curtains sneeze a few times. Is this place also affected by the Order? No, I'm just here to... bid farewell. I changed my mind along the way. This journey has too many variables. So it shouldn't matter if we add another. How did you know she would be here? I didn't. I had a hunch and decided to try my luck. It seems I can be lucky sometimes. It's not like you to leave things to luck. I'm trying to change, too. I don't think you need a bystander in this scenario. Go on ahead. You're not worried I'll take the opportunity to escape? I believe you're the kind of person that has the ability and desire to use everything to your advantage. But that everything does not include Miss Robin. Thank you. Now then, Mr. One Week. I'm not leaving. No way. Let him stay. He won't be in the way. I actually need One Week to be there. She shouldn't be seen talking to a fugitive, no matter the circumstances. You don't intend to reveal your true identity to her? Both parties don't have to be aware that this is a farewell. I shouldn't put her at risk for my selfishness. As you wish. Shall we go then? <sighs> Let's go. Our journey can't begin if I can't take this first step. Expect to see you here, Miss Robin. My name is One Week. I'm a member of the Nightingale family. You're too kind, Miss Robin. You must be very busy. What brings you here to Dream's Edge? Well, perhaps the dreamscape is not so different from reality. When we look up into the night sky, the stars aren't really there. The glimmering lights we see are merely the images of stars from long ago. So, have we ever truly seen a real sky full of stars?
No, no. Today is my rest day. There's going to be a show later, so I came early to find a good seat. It's somewhere farther away. They say it's a farewell performance. The kind that's better to listen to from afar than watch it performed live. <laughs> Miss Robin, may I stay here with you to gaze at the stars before the show begins? Still, these stars are unfamiliar to me. I don't recognize any of them, and it makes me feel uneasy. Perhaps it's both. The Stellaron disaster may not have had any real consequences, but many guests still chose to check out. Now the hotel feels quieter than before. It makes me wonder what Panacone's future will be like. I just hope it will not negatively affect you, Miss Robin. Did the person you wanted to say them to leave? Sometimes, what's in your heart doesn't need to be dressed up in words. Maybe he already knows what you wanted to say. If you don't mind me asking, who is it that you wish to encourage? There are many such people on Peniconi. Failure is like the setting sun to a dream chaser. It's something that happens every day. I believe they all have the willpower to start anew. Especially after receiving a smile from you, Miss Robin. Are you saying that's not true? Failure may be a good thing for someone like that. Being able to reflect on one's actions is a valuable quality to have. Why is that? So, the dream jigsaw. I see. I'll do my best. I'm still inexperienced, so let's just hope we get lucky. Seems we've been blessed with good fortune today. Another Dreamweaver probably left this behind. 
It's a habit for this profession. They hope to use these blessings as a foundation for the dreamscape. The second jigsaw piece. Is this a pair of wings or a decoration made of feathers? We should keep looking. Done. Have a look. those unfamiliar stars, none of which I recognize. But as long as you continue to gaze upon them from here, then those unfamiliar stars will one day be the place of our reunion. seem like a perfect goodbye. It's enough. I only meant to stay quietly by her side for a bit. Why did you do those unnecessary things? What things? Those two notes. If someone finds them, they can be used as evidence against her. So you can do whatever you want as many times as you want, but I can't. I don't want to live with regret for the rest of my life either. Hmm. Live with regret? We're almost done saying our goodbyes, right? Yes, we only have one last stop. But, before we leave, I have a question I'd like to ask you, Mr. Yang. I'm curious. Why did you become a nameless? Why the sudden interest? I always had a feeling that you would never give up on someone who needed help. After spending time with you, I'm even more convinced of this assessment. At this very moment, 
There are countless worlds above the sky still waiting for the arrival of the Astral Express. Yet you and your companions have chosen to stay here. All for an old friend you never knew, and a notorious fugitive. To trailblaze means to forge ahead. Yet you stop and spend precious time on people just passing by. All the while you believe this is the natural course of action? That's not what I think at all. Besides, the Watchmaker also made a similar choice. And because of that, he bid farewell to the Express and never walked among the stars again in his lifetime. Not all journeys lead to the stars. Even if we leave the Express, some trailblazing paths will still continue. You can think of it this way. The title of Nameless doesn't belong to any one person. Each individual will have their own view of what it means to walk this path and will always try their best, no matter the situation. The goal of my trailblazing is not the unknown world, but every living being who exists under the stars. In my homeland, the name Welt means world. It suggests that each person is a world unto themselves and that we harbor as many possibilities as the distant stars. The connections I gain on my journey are what is most precious to me. This is my way of the trailblaze and the reason why I decided to stay here. Why me? Like I said before, I left my home in a hurry too. I know how you feel right now. I also know that a person will only be able to truly face themselves once they've decided to say goodbye to their past, the same way you're doing right here, right now. There was never a third person with us, was there? I told you he'd find out. <laughs> I should have known nothing could escape your keen eyes. Since you already know one week's secret, there's no need for me to build up suspense. Let's go. We'll head straight for the finale and take our final bow in this farewell performance. I know you can hide your appearance, but trespassing on restricted family grounds is still a bold move. Don't worry, I won't take too much time. I was a child when I first visited the Grand Theater. I remember seeing the light behind the curtains from here, and believing it to be the morning star guiding me toward the land of the dreams. When I returned here many years later as the head of the Oak family, I finally learned that the light was actually a Stellaron. Now that you've returned to the stage, what are you planning to do? Prepare for my departure. I've always believed that a person's starting point should also be his last stop. Have you ever seen the elderly at the end of their lives? As they welcome their final moments, they invariably raise their hands, stretching their arms into the emptiness. Much like how babies also stretch their arms into the air when they are first born. Humanity flaps their wings twice as they complete their journey. Once when they are born, and once when they die. In order to flap my own wings and soar again. I will say goodbye. Here. To the me of yesterday. Uh, I really hate this face. My expressions feel so 
dull and lifeless. I see. That explains why something always felt off about your appearance. The halo above your head that symbolizes the harmony, it's been missing since the moment we reunited. It's true that this ring was bestowed upon our people by the heavens. But that doesn't mean it can't be thrown away. While I was in the gallery of thoughts, at the entrance of the dream, I chose to completely sever the halo from myself. Why? I am a fugitive, after all. I must remove any chance of being detected by the family. <sighs> Another reason is... to feel pain. A pain like falling from the sky with broken wings that can keep me awake. This is how I can cast aside all the blessings of the harmony and the order and... For the first time in my life, enter the sweet dream as an ordinary person. Is that also how Mr. One Week came into this world? <laughs> no. You wouldn't believe the real story even if he told you. He was born from an accident, one that you're actually quite familiar with. It was that try not to laugh challenge. Quite embarrassing, to be honest. I was roaming around as an ordinary person when I unfortunately fell into that Pepeshi's trap. The prank that fragmented Miss Ting Yun also divided my fragile self into two. Are you saying that he's a part of you? That's quite surprising given that you two look nothing alike. You could say he's another possibility of me. I too was once a child, with aspirations buried deep within. Over time, those childhood voices grew increasingly faint. Maybe if I had made a small change in my childhood, I would have turned out to be exactly like him. What a pity, failing to become a better version of yourself. So, my final farewell will be like that of Miss Ting Yun. I will perform a tuning on myself and return to my complete form. And this also means that one week will vanish for good. That's why I said this was the last stop. Is there a possibility that you will be the one who disappears? No. This is a foregone conclusion. But who's to say there won't be any changes? Maybe deep down. I'm also anticipating this possibility. Regardless of the outcome, you will have a witness. I'll be waiting for you in the audience. Much appreciated. Now, shall we begin? Anticipating this possibility... You've really changed. In the past, you wouldn't have tolerated any noise at all. I'm about to embark on an unknown journey, where it will be impossible to maintain my orderly life. I will have to navigate unexpected surprises, much like today. You're not ready at all, are you? I feel unsettled, maybe even scared. Ever since I left Penacony, I could no longer control everything. Don't flatter yourself. You can't control anything. But isn't that how it is for most people? My fear of the unknown may be a weakness, but your presence has shown me that surprises aren't always bad. Meeting you has been a great help to me, and I'm glad to have discovered this side of myself. I also feel grateful for the opportunity to tell you this in person. Truly dislike you. What? Are you sure you didn't mean the opposite? I must admit, many of your qualities strike a chord with me. There are times when I want to joke around, 
freely express my thoughts, or openly share my dislike of a person. Or my fondness. I want to tell her that I love all her songs. Then go for it, Sonny. You always talk about locking the bird in the cage, but you're the one who's trapped. Look at yourself. Besides discipline and hesitation, there's nothing else in your life. If you continue living like a slab of marble, you'll break into pieces when you fall. <sighs> but I won't become like you. I simply can't. I dislike people who are frivolous. It makes me uncomfortable to even emulate them. If I fail, I will still uphold my principles, such as decorum and stateliness. As for the harmony, my stance remains the same. Whether it's you or the paths, if what I once doubted, or even opposed, becomes the force I must rely on in the future, then this time, my true heart will guide the tuning. I'll leave it to you. What is this? Leaving your fate entirely up to a coin flip? This isn't like you at all. Did you lose your mind after being run over by the Express? Or were you possessed by that IPC gambler? Failure is always the best teacher. To save more lives, you must first understand what they live for and what they die for. The best way to achieve this is through personal experience. You see? I'm already starting to make changes. Whether it's us merging or one of us disappearing, I'll leave the tuning to fate and see if I can embrace all that I detest. Only then will I truly be able to walk among the living in their world. But what if you can't do it? Well. That's out of my hands. It will just prove that I'm still the same person. The person who always disappoints his sister. Falling is just another name for flying. That's why I rejoice at my broken wings. Step into the mortal world to see how it truly is. Then. Be born as a human, and die as one. And with my last breath, I'll join the weak in reaching my hands toward the sky. On the planet of festivities, whatever identities I once had, they no longer matter. It's not the gods who answer us, but ourselves from the future. I don't have much to say, but as it's time to part ways, here's one last piece of advice. When telling jokes, be sincere. Don't sweat the details, and above all, don't explain them every time. Never mind. Maybe it's better for you not to joke at all. No objections from me. <sighs> this is so annoying. How did I become so dull? <laughs> well, despite everything, try not to be too hard on yourself. There will always be people who are sad. Planet of festivities, land of the dreams, I say goodbye to my home.
One desire to leave the stage for good. One must first step back onto the stage! As expected, the trickiest thing is tuning yourself. These dissonant sounds are much too harsh. All things are as one. Better hedge your bets. <laughs> Don't ask, just spend. <laughs> the dice have been cast. Bust. Or... Maybe I'll take it off! Disorderly noise! Echoes of the past. You need not fade away. Follow me. To the stars! I weep for the departed. Dust spring. It too shall fall. This combat needs optimizing. Hmm. At this speed, too slow. You hold some academic value, I suppose. You'll do. No one resonating! On your bet. Going all in. Tabs on me. Did you come here of your own volition? Or was it fake? Systems as fleeting as the dawns do. Destined for a bit. You took the bait just like that. Time for a buzz. <laughs> Watch your head! Again? Every petal in life's garden will be swept away by the wind of time. Pay attention! Disorderly noise! Can't lose this one. <laughs> Still arms of oblivion, I guide the wandering soul. Orderly noise! I weep for the departed. Dust rings. It too shall fall. You'll do. Enjoy eternal peace. Better hedge your bets. Huh. The dice have been cast. Bust. Or... Maybe I'll take it off! Disorderly noise! All in! <laughs> this combat needs optimizing. Hmm. At this speed, too slow. <laughs> Another journey begins. Assistance is fleeting as the dawns do, destined for oblivion. To 
time has come. Let it be revealed. Is it? Watch your head! All things are at one. Going all in. Tabs on me. Enjoying yourself? All in! Disorderly noise! <laughs> Did you come here of your own volition? In the still waters of oblivion, I guide the wandering soul. <laughs> uh. I weep for the departed. The two shall fall. There's more to life than drawing breath. Pay attention. Every petal in life's guard will be swept away by the wind of time. The noise is fading. Watch your head. Wait. The dice have been cast. Bust? Or... Maybe I'll take it off! Huh. More enemies. Time for a buzz. <laughs> Better hedge your bets. Can't lose this one. Assistance is fleeting as the dawns do, destined for oblivion. You hold some academic. You'll do. <laughs> Optimizing. Hmm. At this speed, too slow. <laughs> Don't ask, just spend. your head. <laughs> the dice have been cast. Bust? Or... Maybe I'll take it off! All in! Another journey begins. I weep for the departed. The two shall fall. Can you let me have some fun this time? Time for a buzz. <laughs> Looks like I've got a one in hand. Huh. Pay attention. 
and the silver of the oblivion and I guide the wandering soul. Disorderly <laughs> noise! More enemies. <laughs> There's more to life than drawing breath. Every petal in life's guard will be swept away by the wind of time. Eternal melody. All right, I'll call your bet. Can't lose this one. <laughs> This time, <laughs> this combat needs optimizing. Hmm. At this speed, too slow. Enjoying yourself? Watch your head. This one is fleeting as the dawn's dew, destined for oblivion. I weep for the departed. <laughs> Dust rings. It too shall fall. myself departure well how should I address you now mr. Sunday or mr. one week whichever you prefer he's probably mocking me from inside right now Thank you for accompanying me through all this, Mr. Yang. This farewell journey has come to an end. What are your plans after leaving Penacone? At this point, there's no need to hide things from you. I believe there's more to the incident involving the Stellaron on Penacone. Are you suggesting that the Dream Master wasn't the one controlling the Stellaron? Don't worry. The Oak family was indeed behind seizing the Stellaron, and resurrecting the fallen Eon during the Charmony Festival, and you've already defeated them. But, Mr. Gopherwood once told me that all the Order's efforts were aimed at avoiding the same mistakes that the Harmony made. My guess is that the family from the Montour system must be involved. Unfortunately, too much time has passed to verify that. Penacone is just a small territory, and even the family heads with their authority cannot enter the sacred site of the Harmony and inquire about the true will of the Great One. In the worst case scenario, if Shipei turned a blind eye, how could the strong defending the weak hold up? Mr. Yang, I just want to tell you this. The Harmony has more than one side. They can be the most steadfast ally of the Astral Express, or the most fearsome enemy. Well, thank you for being honest with me. The efforts of the crew on Penacone were driven by the same concern. After all this, 
The harmony and the preservation will keep the situation on the planet of festivities in balance. With the momentum from the trailblaze, more forces will arrive and Penacone will become a public space in the cosmos. Freedom is the only answer the Nameless can offer. I'm glad that Penacone needs it. You and I both strive for a peaceful society, even if our reasons are different. And you've gone even further than I have. If not for our paths, perhaps you and I wouldn't be in opposition. No, don't sell yourself short. We're not fundamentally opposed. Otherwise, you wouldn't have shown me mercy in front of the Dream Master. This shared journey is my way of repaying you. After all, you are one of my trailblazing goals. <laughs> About that, you've given me many insights as well. Humans are the measure of everything, and no one is the sole savior. Creating a paradise remains one of my lifelong ambitions. As I move forward, I realize I must build it brick by brick. Therefore, I have a request that I hope you'll consider. While I lack the will to trailblaze, nor can I become a true nameless. I admire your convictions. Perhaps what I need more than asceticism is knowledge. Therefore, after leaving Panacone, would you consider letting me come aboard the Astral Express and travel with you for now? So this is why I brought him here. Mr. Sunday wants to join us on the Express. Of course, uh, I can't make that decision alone. the most valuable lessons from my past opponents. Please, say whatever's on your mind. He's just traveling with us. Not an actual member of the Express crew yet. Your newbie status is untouchable. Thank you all for your forgiveness. Perhaps I'll find the answer I'm looking for on this journey. And when that day comes, it'll be farewell. Until then, rest assured that I will do my best to fulfill my duty as your companion. Now that our business on Penacone is settled, it's about time we get back on track and prepare for our next warp jump. Uh, try? No? 
We're still not quite there. <laughs> Indeed, this is only a minor ripple that no one will ever notice. So, you must also understand, for a genius, the importance of asking questions outweighs the importance of the answers themselves. So-called magic has its own set of principles. There are no mysteries in this universe that cannot be solved. So, All-seeing presence. I ask you this. What is divinity? 